Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you soon. So you thought you've been told that, you know, you wasn't, you know, in a, in a sense, wasn't meant to be here, well, maybe wasn't wanted. And then, and then she said, um, and it really did open up, I guess, a wound um, that I didn't realise that I had. Um, she said, um, you do realise that you've probably spent your whole entire life up to now proving to people that you deserve to be here. Um, and yeah, as she said that, I did burst into tears. It, uh, amazingly, I'm not doing it now. <laughs> when you, but I, um, yeah, I just, I really did burst into tears. There was a lot going on at the time. I wasn't very happy at the time, which is why I went to see this lady. And um, yeah, so she said, um, yeah, it's like you're, you literally are, you know, you, you're, you're trying to prove to others you deserve to be here, and I'm here to tell you, you absolutely have every right to be here. You know, as much right as anyone else, and. Um, I'm led by the goddess of justice and which really ring bells to me because um, I'm always about doing what's right by everyone. You know, everyone should communicate. We should all, uh, everyone should be happy and um, listen to and be heard. And, and yeah, so, um, yeah, so that really... Do you think that, do, sorry to cut you off, do you think you've been, if you play back your habits in life, connection with friends, family, going for jobs, sport, whatever it may be. Do you think um, you've been doing what your spiritual has said, trying to prove that you deserve to be here? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what are some of the things do you think now that through self-reflection that you've done where you've pushed yourself probably more than you would have done in a, a different circumstances? What do you think you've done to, to prove that? Because, I ask that because in a way I wish somebody would ask me that because I feel like um, I've done that too, you know. Um, yeah. I feel like I've tried, you know, moving to Australia is a prime example. I, I look back now and my colleagues, for example, are probably trying to be really over the top, connect with them because I'd, going home I only had, you know, my partner, my dog and stuff, but I didn't have anything else. And yeah. uh, it was this pre-kids. And um, I, I, in my mind, I forgot that they had everything outside of the the walls of work, you know, and, uh, and, but I just think if I was in England and I remember an Irish dude coming here, coming to work, and I remember thinking, oh, well, I never thought that's the point. Um, I just assumed he had everything at his apartment that he needed, but he was here on his own in Manchester, his friends and family, I know it's only in Ireland and he could have an hour flight on a Friday night if he wanted to, but you, you see the point I'm trying to make. Um, and he was friendly with me. I mean, me being me, I was friendly right back, but if he was chose to do that with somebody else, they probably might not have been as, as receptive. I've always been quite open to connection with anybody. It's yeah. more of a running joke, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I know I went on me there for a little bit. No, I love I, it. I asked that, oh. yeah. So, no, yeah, well, what my, do you think? My, yeah, sorry. Um, my um saying, one of my favourite saying is strangers are friends that we just haven't met yet. <laughs> so yeah. I'm all about connection. Well, I'm going to write that one down. Everyone, everyone, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. I think I just read it somewhere. And I was Can like, you say it again? Strangers are friends that we just haven't met yet. Um, and I'm going to use that as my uh, guest gem. <laughs> I've got many of them. I'll come up with some more. I'll try to think of them along the way. Oh, write but... them down too, don't you? I, I, I quote, the, if you've not noticed on social media, uh, I'm only 10, by the way, for the people who are listening, I'm only 10 episodes in, in terms of publishing them. So Sarah will be way, way down the line, probably in the tw near the 20s, maybe just before the 20s, but I'm doing guest gems uh, and their oh, really? quotes from the, from the oh, guest, really? you see. Oh, okay. Well, so that's why I'm writing that down. Anyway. Sorry, I've just ruined your, mo your, your moment. So carry on. Str strangers and friends, we just haven't met yet. Carry on, sorry. Well, it, was the, it was a big joke in Australia that I would always mm. meet new friends. Like I know there's people that are just like their core group of friends. And um, and it's not that I got bored of them or anything. You couldn't. I, w I don't get bored. But um, 
But I, yeah, I'd always be like, we'd have a get together. And I'd be like, oh, I've met someone else. Can I invite them, you know, to the party or invite them? And they're like, and <laughs> someone said, do you literally sit at the airport and with a sign and say, come, come be my friend. You know? <laughs> like I'm always meeting new people, you know, and, um, and, you know, there's people on the street all the time and they'll chat and I love chatting to them, you know, especially homeless people. And, you know, I love to hear their story. We've all got a story. And um, and I learn, you learn, you know, if, even if it's just to be a bit more fucking humble, you know, and um, and grateful, you know, of our life. You always learn, you know, from from other people. So, um, so yeah, that's Absolutely. a big thing. Oh, I can't remember what we were saying something. You said something earlier and I wanted to... Um, Oh God! Um, under what under what subject was it? Where were we? Yeah, like when you said about um, like I do. Yeah, I've learned to relax more. Whereas before, I always mm. felt like, what's my purpose? What is my? I'm very very lucky that I'm healthy. I'm you know happy. I've got two healthy children, and you know I was I'm always felt in a really lucky position. What can I do, you know, to help others and serve others? And I always felt that I wasn't doing enough. And um, no, that's not true because then also I did also feel that I wasn't. Um, I think in my home environment I felt not appreciated uh, enough. I don't know. This is a whole other. Mm. I don't know. Um, and I've always okay. been looking. Oh, sorry. I think there's a bit of a delay. I do apologize. Carry on. Yeah, no, it's no, it's good. I think. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going either. <laughs> so, um, no, I yeah. think. Are you, are you trying to prove yourself? I not pro yeah, you, yeah. Do you, I feel like I am? I feel like we're on the same uh, wavelength here with regards to maybe proving things to people in your life. Mine's probably um, probably my friends, uh, close friends and family. I'm trying to prove things, and I've got a quote for another from the quality quote section in my website but i you know i i'm doing i kind of want to do this because i don't want to prove anyone else wrong i just want to prove myself right yeah but i think deep down before i've changed that mindset to that i probably was trying to prove things to you know family and friends that i'm meant to do something right i'm meant yeah. to do it yeah. and, you know moving to australia is one thing traveling the world was one thing playing basketball coaching at a decent level was one thing, you know, and then try to turn a negative from my trauma into, well, I consider it trauma, some other people might not, but, you know, um, to to do the book. And now that was done and no one said a thing about it. And then, you know, and then you move on. And it's, I was always trying to prove things. And now I'm yeah. not. I'm doing yeah. it for me, not for anybody yeah. else, you know. Yeah. There is that do, um, do you... something I heard not so long ago, like the Olympics, where, um, you know, you um, – your goal is to, you know, win the Olympics or something, but then after they, their mental health is absolutely trashed or what yeah. is that the right word? Because suddenly they're like, now what? You know, now what do I do? And um, at, yeah, some real work. Look at is, actors. Look at friends. Look yeah. at people from friends like Matthew yeah. Perry. You know, yeah. God bless his soul. You know, he yeah. was lonely after filming Friends. Uh, friends had finished because you're doing something so, so amazing where everyone loves you and you're loving it and you're giving so much to the world and you but at the same time there's so much fame and money that comes with it you can do whatever you want when that all goes away you've got all this money but all the love all that connection's gone because they're somewhere yeah. else yeah. and you know and, and it's just look at people who win the lottery they go into depression oh, um, yeah. and this is you know it, it, people who have worked hard for their money have got a lot of money actually it's proven if you give money away that's why we have philanthropy you actually probably live a longer healthier life you you know we've replaced modern day with pleasure and substituted happiness with pleasure so pleasure is short term and happiness is, is long term yeah. and um, i was listening to i forgot who said it oh, i would love to quote them but and I've, it stuck with me but what makes happiness you know again happiness is long term but threefold purpose meaning your meaning why you get out of bed every every day what what you can contribute to the world um enjoyment and satisfaction and that would give you that i suppose that long-term happiness and another guy on a podcast with gary the ceo actually said about the four c's of contentment you know i think i don't ever mention this to you last time but c would be the you know connection you know your tribe your people your loved ones your friends your family and so on c second c contribute contribute to the world give to you and i think that's why you have a few 
connection with the you said you're an emp uh, you're an emp very empathetic person but yeah. that's can also bring you down because you're not yeah. finishing the loop of compassion and where have you i'm not saying you don't physically help people out that's not what i'm saying yeah. but i think people who are over empathetic uh, they can't finish that loop because they're imagining what it's like to be in that other person's shoes giving what they need but then it kind of ends there and they need to give go into that compassion zone maybe and yeah. they feel like it's like that I suppose that's giving money away or giving a room to the homeless person that night and things like that um i don't know i'm just thinking of examples so con um, contribute the fourth thing would be cope so cope would be mindfulness um sleep and exercise the things that we mentioned before and then the yeah. fourth thing would be cook so basically eating food that grows from the ground and anything that eats from the growing ground if i mean i'm a meat eater so that's why i say that bit but um you know if you put the right things into your body uh, and, and it's a unity with all those four things then you're achieving contentment yeah and i really believe in that and i've noticed that change in myself since trying to contribute to get those four c's i mean you get it wrong sometimes of course and you slip here and there but that's what life is all about you you will slip and go down and you know that's why i self-reflect on the days that i don't do the cold plunges right you know i'm, I'm a yeah. bit more brain fog um i'm a bit more sluggish you know um and that's when i tend to hit the chocolate that night on a Friday yeah. night when we have movie night and i get so sugar powerful. and i'm not great the next day yeah, yeah. yeah. And, At least you're aware yeah, of it. See that thing went on, you know, same, same with me. Um, yeah. You know, certainly, um, well, this week I've been working um, every day, which that's, that's got, most people work every day, Sarah. But I think it's, I've been traveling and sort of up at four in the morning, <laughs> meeting my dad and, you know, at five and out and traveling and not getting home till like six, seven o'clock. So that's been a real wow, you know, for me. And, um, and so there was a few days that I didn't have the cold bath and the, and so come Saturday morning when I didn't have to get up, yes, no, that's, is this more, what's the day? Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it was yesterday morning, God. Um, I, I suddenly, my brain started going overtime and, um, and I suddenly started festering a little bit in bed, you know, and you're like, and then I started to feel a bit crappy, you know, and I'm like, no, you need to just get up, have a mm -hmm. cold bath and have a shower. And even just mm -hmm. having a shower, that's sort of, that's me. That's my, um, you know, sets me up a bit for the day. So, Sarah, uh, the, the thing that I wanted to ask about Sheila, you said you just don't, you don't, um, you, you're so sad that you, Sheila couldn't, you know, I suppose um, your children couldn't be influenced by, by Sheila, but, you know, I feel I feel that you can you can do that. You can take pieces of Sheila and put it into your own spin and 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 do that. They don't they don't need Sheila. Sheila was for you. Yeah. Sheila wasn't for you girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 you you can take pieces of all these positive people in your life to do what you girls and I'm sure I'm sure your girls have got other people in their life that they'll take pieces of that they need as well, like you did from Sheila. Yeah. Sheila was here for you, I believe. I don't. I don't yeah. believe Sheila was there for you, for your children. She I hope. I hope you can take some peace in that. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, that's very true. I do miss. That's I miss. Um, like we would. Uh, I mean, bless her. She's in her eighties, and um, I, I know she'd be nearly ninety or you know late eighties anyway now. And um, but she um, like she came out to visit just before I had Mia. So it was like 15 years mm. ago, Australia to visit. And then she came out after we had Mia as well. And she was just such a, yeah, she was, she was the mum. She was a real mum to me. And, um, oh, and you nice. know, so I miss that. I mean, I miss like my mum, you know, not dissing her in any way. And, you know, I couldn't imagine having the life that my mum had. She sort of, she had all the shit thrown at her and um, managed to survive it up to a point. But um, but yeah, Sheila was the mum that I guess I didn't I needed and didn't really have. And um, yeah, and she was sort of and we'd always have phone calls. We'd speak probably every few months, which wasn't as often as we should, but it didn't matter. You know, same with any of my friends back here. It, it didn't matter. You just catch up where you left off and had always had lots to talk about. And I was always sending her photos of the girls. And I remember when she came out actually when I had Mia and she was perfect. Like she cook us foods and she was like, this is what you need. You don't need me. To to buy you baby grows and stuff like that you need meals cooked for you i think i think she was definitely for you wasn't she that's for sure absolutely um, 
I want to get on to, um, there's quite a pivotal part in your life that I think is um, a huge point. And it, I think it, it ties into, you know, some of the things we've discussed already. But I do, I, I feel like I kind of dragged you away from the original question. Um, and it, that's a good thing about this podcast. You know, it can go anywhere and it just, it highlights relationship and connection and just authenticity with people so i love the way we've just gone but i do want to answer i do want us i want to be clear because i do feel like there's a bit of a question mark and i apologize if you did already answer it but the part where we've mentioned about what do you do in your life now do you think or you have done now through self-reflection since seeing that therapist in adelaide the spiritualist um what do you think you do to maybe overcompensate to kind of prove to you and others that you do belong on the soil on this planet um i'm doing me so um so yeah that's the thing i'm putting myself first like i'm making sure that the girls have got what they need but i'm not i think in adelaide i would stress about them a little bit more than i probably should have done i think i was just empty i was i had nothing to give and that was many reasons is there any any examples that you think you can recall of where you did maybe over overdo it maybe mine i i, I put that in the category of mine i overdid it Right. Do you think you had any of those things that you did? Absolutely. I know in Australia, I was um, um, I was the one. I was the, my friends would say the glue that sort of kept everyone together. And I would, I would, mm. I, I, I think I was overcompensating. Well, you know, I've got a lovely friend there, Danielle, and when I told her about what the spiritualist said, she went, "Oh my God, that is so true." You know, because she's really laid back, and um, although I think that comes down to star size as well, a Taurus, a bit like my husband, just dead laid back, just drifts through life, you know, and quite happily go a day not speaking to someone. Whereas I'm like, oh, "Are you okay? Are you?" You know, if I haven't spoke to someone for a while, yeah. then I think, "Oh, maybe I've upset them," or you know what I mean, and and yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. um, sort of yeah, and then I'm like, oh, I better do a get together and. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think like what you say is just checking that everyone's okay and, yeah, and things that people Have probably... Have you stepped back from to. that now? Sorry? Do, 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 do you do those little things just as much still or have no. you stepped back? Because I feel like I've stepped back. I've definitely stepped back. Yeah, I don't know if it's an age thing or whether you just realise you've exhausted yourself by doing that and it hasn't worked for you. Um, acting that way another big thing as well was when I went vegan um, which was oh god I can't I think I was 40 and um, uh, the story of that was um, I um, so my nan passed away my nan died of cancer and always had she got breast cancer and um, so I was all I've always lived with the it's going to happen to you because um, you know it skips a generation and blah 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 and I have had issues with lumps and things like that and so I always kind of felt that the the time the thing was above me that it's going to happen to me. That's how I'm going to die. You know, that's, that's it because that's what you're told. But then at the age of 40, I shaved my hair for the cancer council as a way of making money for the cancer council. I was doing the Marilyn Jetty swim, which is a big thing to do in, in, um, in, in, uh, in Australia, sorry, in, um, in Brighton. And um, it was a really amazing cause. Um, Sarah, one of the girls, um, her mum died of cancer and she wanted a way of, um of um, honoring that and uh, raising money and so she decided to um get 100 women to dress up as Marilyn Monroe and swim around the jetty the Brighton jetty and it's become massive since then so I did that for a few years and uh, one year I was like how do I raise more money because you've got to raise I think it was $500 at least and um, I would raise about 1500 but then this year I was like, I'm going to shave my hair. What scares me the most? What scares me? And it's always, it, I, I live behind my hair. Not live behind it, but, you know, you're just like, oh, you know. <laughs> and also having girls, um, you know, you want to show them that, fuck it, your hair's not everything. Do you know what I mean? And beauty isn't everything and all that. So I did. I um, I raised $4,500 and um, shaved my hair on the day of the swim, put my wig back on. And so no one actually saw it till the end of that day. I said, you've got to pay more money. So it's a really fun thing. Where am I going with this? Yes, yeah, so I did that swim. Oh, that was it. I did it because I knew that one day I'd be asking for money back. So it was kind of paying my debt thinking that I'm going to get cancer I'm going to get um you know breast cancer or whatever so I'm going to need help so I'm going to pay my dues in advance and then I found out shortly after that I think my husband actually showed me a video called dairy is scary and I didn't know that cows I did not know that cows have to have babies to make milk now that sounds really stupid because <laughs> a lot of people do know that didn't a few years ago either to be fair you didn't know 
See what I mean? I didn't so, know until about a few years ago, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I want to go to your mother's relationship because this is from our chats and what I know of you. I didn't know this about you, but from our pre-chats and some of the videos, what caught my attention about you is with some of your videos online. And that's why I made contact with you about your journey. You, from the age of 13, since really finding out, sitting down with your mother, just quickly, you had a good relationship with your mother, right? I know she went through, she was obviously yeah, going through. Very, very close. We were like sisters, very good relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't think she made all, all the right choices in life necessarily, but that's who she was, you know, and we were very open yeah. and yeah, good mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. And you said earlier in the podcast, uh, I mean, I, was, I already know, but you, you did, you've already exposed it, um, that you're at the age of 16, you, your mum committed suicide. Um, did you, did you, did it ever enter your mind before she committed suicide? This is something she was capable of doing. Absolutely. Um, I was actually yeah. um, 18 when it happened, but that's okay. It was um, when oh, I was sorry, 16. 18. Sorry. Right. I don't know where I got 16 from. No, 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 it's all right. I did say when I was 16, um, I finished, I spent a year at Bosworth Tutorial College, which is where I mingled with the best of the best and had such an amazing mm. year. And that's where Sheila, who's like my mum, she was a deputy um, head there and she also was a maths teacher there. And um, so she got me in there um, for cheap. It was a few grand, but she, but I managed to do a year there and do my GCSEs there, which is brilliant. In that Amazing. time, my mum had moved to Weymouth. Um, so, in, so I didn't mention the fact my nan died of cancer at 13. That was absolutely devastating, just awful. And then um, not even a year after that, that was May, um, May, and then a year, February the next year, um, my mum's partner, Jag, he looked like Mick Jagger, so they called him Jag. Him and my mum had been together a few years, absolutely idolised each other, were so in love. It was sickening, it was ridiculous, but it was lovely. Um, Jag had a daughter called Jodie, has a daughter, she's still here, she's two years older than me. Me and her are close as, we're just thick as bees, we're close as anything. And unfortunately, he had a heart attack. I was 14. He had a heart attack in my mum's bedroom. My mum was actually getting ready for work and she heard a big thud, went into the bedroom. He was on the floor and um, stopped breathing. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.